computer science introductory session to give you an overview of what to expect if you do choose to opt it at sixth form. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Stannard. Um, I'm head of computing and business at Bayhouse Sixth Form and also Bayhouse School. And also Mr. Lees, who is the subject lead at Sixth Form for computer science and for IT. Uh, this is just to give you a basic kind of overview of what to expect and the different components of the course. So firstly, a sort of overview of the different components. So you'll be expected to cover quite a broad range of topic areas that comes under the, the umbrella of computer science. Um, some of them you might expect and some of them you might be less familiar with and less likely to think of as computer science. So obviously you cover programming, system development, computer architecture, data communication and applications. Um, that's your kind of core computer science topics. Um, the programming itself, yes, we do teach Java. And yes, we do specifically teach a programming language. However, the emphasis isn't such that you will be learning specifically that language. It's to give you a good, broad base to work from if you did go into industry, if you did take it further into university. And the emphasis is uh, a lot on computational thinking. And computational thinking is essentially logical problem solving and how we can think more like machines in order to efficiently program a working solution. Some of the wider topics that we cover as well are the sort of bigger picture aspects. So things like the environmental impacts, the cultural impacts, um, and how computer science can benefit us on a daily basis. Um, I think these are really exciting topics to cover, uh, and I hope you feel the same. In terms of the step from GCSE to A-level, it's quite a big step. Um, Obviously, we, we use GCSE as a bit of a base, a bit of a platform. However, if you didn't choose computer science at GCSE, this isn't necessarily an issue because we do start right the way back from sort of square one and build up. So last year, we didn't actually offer computer science at A-level. So this is from the year before. So we've had almost, like, I guess, like a, a year break, as it were. Um, but from the year before, as you can see, our subject results were amazing. Um, a star to B was 83% and A star to C was 100%. We hope to continue that record. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't. The class sizes that we have are sort of around about 10-ish. So it's quite nice to have that kind of class size as you have sort of one-to-one -one interactions on a on a lesson-by-lesson -lesson basis and hopefully fill in any gaps in knowledge pretty quickly. So the course itself is made up of three different components. Um, component one, two, and three. Uh, component one is your kind of logical problem solving component, looking at algorithms, principles of uh, programming, system analysis, system design, system engineering, and program construction. That is your, your programming section. That's making up 40% of the course and is assessed via a written assessment. Uh, and I believe that's every two hours and 45 minutes. Component two is your theory uh, component, looking at architecture and communication applications. Uh, again, that's a 40% 40, 40 weighting and is, excess, sorry, is assessed via one examination. The final component, component three, is your programming assessment, uh, where you'll be expected to write uh, a program test it and evaluate it. Um, and that makes up 20% of your overall grade. And as, as I said, we do that in Java. Cool, so why choose computer science? So I think it's quite obvious why most people would choose computer science. It has a massive bearing on the world that we live in today. It is very much a forward thinking industry and there's always going to be a, a big job market available within computer science and the sort of peripheral areas of that. Um, if you didn't want to take it to industry and if you just wanted to study it just at A level, it gives you a real good base to use that computational thinking just in your kind of daily life and your other subjects. Computational thinking, yes, it does help you in computer science, but it will just help you uh, 
build a solid base to problem solve and to get through your kind of daily lives, really. Um, computer science will encourage you to develop a number of different aspects. Uh, the fundamental principles of com computers themselves, including abstraction, decomposition logic, and uh, data representation. The ability to analyze problems in computational terms, like that's, the, that's the thing that I was just saying. Um, it allows you to problem solve and break problems down into more kind of manageable chunks. Um, looking at the kind of wider picture, the moral, social, and environmental aspects of computer science and how we can improve our daily lives and society. Um, it also gives you the kind of space to work creatively. Um, some people may not think that about computer science, but it is a very creative subject, especially when you're looking at um, the program inside. There's not one way to fulfill a brief. You can do it in any way that you want, as long as it's efficient and it ticks the boxes as you go through. Um, and the last thing is the, the capacity to see relationships between different aspects of computer science and linking those to the real world. It also tests your mathematical skills. So there's a lot of um, mathematical based topics within computer science. Quite often the students that take computer science often do take maths as well, uh, but that isn't necessarily a requirement. It's just usually what most of those types of students do. So here's just a sort of word or of the different um, job markets that you potentially go into that you may not have thought of. The big one there is gaming. Everyone that takes computer science, well, not everyone, a lot of pupils that take computer science think they want to become game developers or game engineers, which is fine. Um, however, there's a much broader market for computer scientists. Um, research is a massive one. Research companies out there are crying out for decent computer scientists and programmers to help develop research models. Um, film, tourism, those are two markets you wouldn't ordinarily think of to do with computer science. Um, but like I said, there's a big job market out there and computer science is an industry that is requiring a lot of people to get into. Um, so you're never going to be short of a job, hopefully, after leaving the A-level and potentially going on to uh, university. But it's not necessarily something that you have to do. You could think about maybe taking a uh, an apprenticeship in any one of those industries. That's also something that we'll be looking at as well, uh, getting people from industry to come in and speak to you to give you a uh, the next sort of step, the next platform in which to start looking into. And like I said, you don't have to go to uni. You might want to look at apprenticeship as well. Um, that's kind of the end of the presentation and sort of the basic overview. Um, if you've got any more questions,